so guys uh, good evening everyone so uh, i am just uh, doing this video uh, for uh, clearing your concept uh, on the topic of functional dependency and normalization the topic that uh, i have shared for the preparation of this week and these two topics are you can say the core part of your dbms uh, database management system and uh, it's also very important to know the how a good database design can be represented then we have to understand what is the role of functional dependency and what is the role of normalization in database now let's uh, first start with the discussion of functional dependency i'm just giving an overview overall an overview of functional dependency which will help you to understand the role of normalization so my uh, main aim of this lecture is to give an uh, give you a depth concept of normalization and uh, to understand that concept we have to get a overview of functional dependency now what is functional dependency so functional dependency uh, play a key role in differentiating good database design from database design that means i mean to say that functional dependency is mainly used to determine whether the database design is a good or not without functional dependency proper functional dependency the database design cannot be a good database design it can be a part of bad database design now functional dependency is a type of constraint that is generalization of the notion of the key so it based on the concept of a key so the key concept i have already discussed in dbms we have used several sort of keys several types of keys like uh, we have already used for key we have already see how to use candidate key primary key then i have already discussed about alternate key what is alternate key how it can be represented and then some other sort of key like foreign key i have already discussed so let's start with a formal definition of a functional dependency now functional dependency is a well formed relation obviously this two topic ft and uh, uh, normalization i am going to discuss on the basis of relational database please remember we are or working on rdbms so we are going to discuss about on the basis of relational database now a function dependency on the relation schema r is a constraint x implies y or x tends to y where x and y are subsets of attributes of r here we can we have to remember a function dependency can be represented by the help of this sort of relation x implies y where you can say x is a subset of attributes okay y is also a subset of attributes and this x and y both belongs to the same relation r clear so x and y now it these two has two separate names so a function dependency is the relationship between the attribute y and the determinant x such that for a given value of a determinant the value of the attribute is uniquely defined that means this y is a dependent is a is a is a dependent that means depends on the value of x so x is determinant right so x determine y that's why it is determinant and y is dependent on x so that's why it is dependent right depends on x so that's why it is dependent so by the help of the attribute it may be single attribute or it may be a set of attributes we can define another set of attributes y uniquely so this sort of thing is called functional dependency right so this thing has been declared here discussed here now uh, so every so a functional dependency extends to is satisfied in an instance r of the relation r if for every pair of tuples t and s and if t and s agree on attributes in x that they must agree on all attributes in y so let's discuss understand functional dependency with some example and there are several uh, uh, types of functional dependency exist so uh, let's start with a discussion suppose there there is a student table i have already uh, discussed several times we have you have, you have already created a student table several times where there are some attributes name is, name is there so here you can understand this is actually a student schema has been given and this is the attribute student schema student id which may be a roll number of student student name student age these three are student attributes of the student table right now student id obviously you can understand this is the primary key by the for student id you can uniquely identify each student name and its corresponding age right the so student id attribute uniquely identifies the student name what i have already discussed so because if we know the student id can tell the student name as well as so we can represent the same thing by the for functional dependency in this way student id implies student name the so student name is a dependent on student id the so student id is determinant 
So uniquely, we can determine each and every student name by a corresponding or unique ID or roll number, whatever you say. So we can say student name is functionally dependent on student ID. In the same way, uh, in this example, student ID is also dependent on student age. So uh, student ID tends to or implies student age. So each and every student age is again functionally dependent on student ID. Okay. So this is a formal definition of a student. So if a column A of a column of a table uniquely identifies the column B of the same table, then it can be represented it tends to be. So E is a column of one table, it represented a column of the same table uniquely. So it is called A implies B. So B is functionally dependent on attribute A, which has been declared here with a real life example. Now there are four types of functional dependency we generally see trivial functional dependency, non-trivial, multi-valued, and transitory dependency. Very important dependency, and you can you will get the application of these four types of dependency in normalization as well, right? So trivial functional dependency. What is trivial functional dependency? So these terms are very much uh, you are familiar with these terms because in set theory we are using uh, quite using this term trivial, non-trivial, transitive. Okay. Now the dependence of an attribute on a set of attribute is uh, is a is a trivial function dependency if the set of attributes include if the set of attributes includes that attribute right so it's known as the trivial function dependency if the set of attributes include that means very simple way if a implies b then whatever attributes the b contains it may be one attribute or it may be more than one attribute that should be a subset of the attribute of a so then we can say a implies b is a trivial functional dependency so if b is a subset of a what i have already told let me give, give you one example okay so a tends to a is a function very simple functional dependency two example has been given a tends to a so a is a subset because this a already present at the left hand side so dependent attribute value is equivalent to the determined attribute value so we can say this a is a subset of this a right Okay, it, 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 uh, the conception will be more clear if we check other examples. Like, suppose this is a real life example. Again, student uh, table or student relation we will consider where student ID and student name is there. And the student ID, comma, student name implies student ID. So, can we write this sort of functional dependency for the student table? Yes, we can write. That means student, by the help of student ID and student name combined, we can imply student ID. That means student ID can be functionally dependent on the student ID plus student name together. So this student ID is a subset of this student ID. So this B part is a subset of the A part. This student ID present as a subset. So we can say this function, this sort of functional dependency is called trivial functional dependency. Clear? Now, non-trivial, just opposite of this trivial functional dependency. Obviously, any attribute on the right hand side should not be a subset of the left hand side. Okay. So we can say it's a very simple. Uh, like if, if we consider an employee table where, which has employee ID, employee name, employee address, so employee ID implies employee name. So obviously this is not a subset of the left hand side. So this is a non-trivial functional dependency. This is also not a subset of the left hand side. This is a non-trivial functional dependency. So it totally depends upon the designer, the designer choice, which type of functional dependency they will use in real life situation. They will handle the table in such a way. Now. Next type of dependency is multi-value dependency. Multi-value dependency occurs when there are more than one independent multi-value attributes in a table. Let me give you give you one example. Suppose I am a teacher, right? I am a teacher of computer science. So I can teach students of IT as well as I can teach students of computer science as well as I can teach students of double. Or suppose I am a teacher of DBMS subject, right? So I can. So suppose the teacher name is one attribute. Okay, of a table of a relation and book is another attribute of a relation. So one teacher may have multiple books, or I can teach DBMS, or I can teach any other subject like computer network as well. Because I am a teacher of computer science, I should know all the other subjects of computer science as well, more than one subject of computer science as well. So one attribute is depend is dependent on multiple attributes, right? So if if I am a DBMS teacher, so I can follow the book of Koth or I can follow the book of Navate, or I can follow the book of suppose uh, even Baros, right? So all these three books belongs to me. So this this sort of relationship is called multi-valued dependency, where multiple values that exist within the same attribute, like book attribute, like of Kavat, Navate, Korth, and uh, Baros, but it is connected with a single 
it depend dependent on the single well attribute which is the name of the teacher like sanjay right the so multiple dependence is a full constraint between two sets of attributes in a relation in contrast to the functional dependence the multiple dependency requires that certain tuples be present in a relation right so let me let let you give me one example a real life example suppose this is a table which consists of three attributes bike model manufacturing year and color so if we if you see the bike model attribute and color attribute we can say the same bike model with the same number okay this is a this is a number unique number of a bike but this two number has two different colors obviously this two different colors means these two bikes are two separate entities right because m1001 this bike is a, has a black color and this m1001 the board may be same but this bike has a red color so these two are separate as the same bike cannot be a red, red color as well as black color so these two separate entities are there so this is a multiple dependency exists between bike model and color so multiple dependency exists between bike model and color clear so this is one of the basic example of multiple dependency now the last one is transitive dependency so uh, a functional dependency is said to be transitive as, as all of you know the transitive relationship in, in our uh, linear algebra in our in our set theory that a, if a tends to b and b tends to c then we can say a tends to c that is a very basic uh, mathematical fund that all of we know about transitive dependency the same transitive dependency uh, function is applicable in case of functional dependency so if x tends to y and y does not tends to x x tends to y means y does not tends to x okay so vice versa is not true always right and y tends to z so we can write x tends to z the transitive dependency can only offer in a relation of three of more attributes obviously if we if, if it will have three attributes then only transitive dependency occurs but only the relation which has which has only two attributes transitive dependency cannot exist in those kinds of relationship so by looking those relationship we can easily say if the relationship has only two attribute two attributes then we can we can say the transitive dependency can never be exist on that particular relation right so it must have minimum three attributes or more so this dependency helps us normalizing the database in third normal form so when we will we are going to uh, learn the third normal form we will see that this transitive dependency creates the impact on the uh, on on the on finding the third normal form right so let give me one example so book author and author name very uh, sorry author age so these are the three attributes okay so the books of game of thrones harry potter dying of light and authors are given martin rowling r r martin and author's age as given so you can say by the for book we can say our relationship exists between book and author the book implies author that means author here is a dependent variable and book is a determinant so by the help of book name you can easily find the author name so author is a determined dependent and book is determinant now the same way by the help of author name you can easily find author age so book tends to author and author tends to age author age is applicable so we can directly write book tends to author age is possible so the same thing will be represented in the next slide the book tends to author is possible because we know the author name from the book and author does not tends to books author obviously vice versa is not true so we are not considering our, we are not uh, thinking about vice versa so author implies author age so book tends to author or author implies author age so we can write directly from book tends to author age so therefore uh, as far the rule of transitive dependence we can write book tends to author age should hold that makes sense because if we knew the book name we can Know the author's age. So these are the various sort of dependency, functional dependency exists, and we will uh, see that uh, it has a huge application on um, identifying the normalization. So in the next le lecture, I will discuss about the normalization and its various applications, which is very important. So uh, functional dependency is not yet completed because there are some topics which are very very important, and lots of questions are coming from functional dependency part. The topics like uh, how to find a uh, closer set of functional dependency, a closer set of attributes, closer set of functions. Those are very important. Then canonical cover of a data of, of a function, how we can identify it, and one of the very interesting and important rule of functional dependency, which is called Armstrong axioms. What are the five Armstrong axioms that exist in functional dependency that we will discuss in our future uh, lecture? So uh, thank you very much for listening this lecture. Thank you.